Welcome to this quick demonstration on MS project, including an example. You would need to know what to do, so you would usually have a brainstorm, a whiteboard session with a, with a project team, highlighting all the tasks that are required for completion of the project. Once this is done, uh, you have it more or less usually try and have it in chronological order, and then you would apply a duration to each one of the tasks. The second thing to do is you would try and group them as possible to see if there is any logical groupings that can be done. And then you would highlight the groups. Now we just would like to copy that list into MS Project. So we jump onto MS Project. The first thing I like to do is to check that I am in auto mode. And what's the point of using MS Project if you have to put all the dates of your tasks manually? So if you come from Excel uh, with a table like this, it would be a good uh, time saver to change MS Project's column to accommodate for the spreadsheet, just temporarily at least, so you could just copy and paste and you would have the, the duration and the resource names already uh, put in there. So I'll be changing this, just moving this column there, so it can mirror the Excel. Once done, I can just happily paste my spreadsheet into this. And then I put the colon back just uh, so nobody freaks out when they see a colon out of place there. Then you can indent any task that is under a group. This way you create tasks and subtasks. And then once that is done, what you can do is you can ask some uh, type of bookends to this uh, schedule task at the start. Make it a little bit more formal, like Project Kiko for instance. And then towards the end, you can put uh, closing the project tasks. Actually, you could have two things under this. The first thing you would have sign off, uh, making sure that you have the sign off. In theory, the sign off should uh, happen before the closing, but we'll make an exception this time. And the second thing that I would have here is lesson learned, especially if you have to, to do this project uh, several times. If you have to paint a few houses, it'd be good to bring all the guys together and to get feedback on what went well and what didn't go as well. Now this is done, what we can do is start linking the tasks. So there's two principles that uh, I like to follow and I think uh, that they're good principles. First one is a group duration should be driven by the subtasks, not by the groups themselves. I think we're good with that because we added the groups later on. And the second thing is we're trying as much as possible not to link tasks from different groups. It's okay to link groups together, but linking a task from, let's say, planning phase to the preparation phase directly is not really recommended because your schedule could quickly become out of hand and hard to read. But having said that, there are exceptions. First thing to do is to check if we can link some groups directly. This is uh, much better if we can, it's clearer. So here, yes, all the all the phases seem to be sequential. So we select all the groups by pressing Ctrl and then we link them together. Then we have a look at individual tasks. We have a look, yes, everything seems to be sequential. Let's say for, uh, for example, uh, under the preparation phase, the protect flooring and landscaping. So that could be done maybe in parallel to the clear the work area. So we, we can put it in parallel for the time being and then we'll, later on we'll see if it was uh, helpful or not. Now I am linking the project kickoff task to the first phase. And I am linking the last phase to the closing project, which were two tasks that I added and just need to add them to the loop. So all that's done. What we need to do now is just to ensure we have no bad surprises. And how do we do that? We confirm the constraints. We go and ask how many resources do we have? What are, what are the things that could go in a way? I'm not talking about heavy risks here, I'm just thinking about, uh, thinking about parameters that need to be taken into account for the project. So a constraints list has been provided, owners only available the 10th of January, so there's several ways to go about this. There is a Microsoft project way, so we would go under project, project information, and here we would put the start date of the project. 
10th of January 2024 because this is really the, the formal way to doing it. But you know, what I prefer to do is to really have a task on the MS project. So this way it's obvious for everyone. So let's go into the scenario when someone has a look at your project and only see it started the 10th of January. So how would they know that there is a constraint on this? They would have to go in the project information and have a look there. Just uh, I, I prefer to be clearer and just to put the cannot start before uh, task, for instance, here. So it's clear. Yes, we have the 10th of January and the reason is we cannot start before that. So if they want to know the reason that they can dig in a little bit more, but at least it's obvious, it's visible when people have a look at the project. Now let's have a look at this 24 hours to dry business. We double click on that task. And when we look at predecessors, what we do here is add one day lag. Press OK. So therefore, between this task and the previous task, we will have one day here. Uh, the other component is two resources to clean up. So here what we do is we just input clean up one, clean up two, instead of just having clean up. So this way we differentiate the two resources. Obviously, if we know the names, we can put the names. We do it this way. We do it here, we do it here. And what I'm doing here, you know, this uh, there's a red man showing that there is an overallocation of those uh, two resources. But I don't want to make around and uh, you know locate cleaner one for this, cleaner two for the for those. I trust those guys. I know they'll be doing the work, so I will be just adding this final task in parallel. And they know they have four tasks, and they will do them more or less whenever they want. I'll keep track, of course, but this is uh, my preferred way of doing it with trusted resources. For painters, uh, we do the same. We just to put painter one, painter two. Uh, but uh, during the planning phase, we only put painter one because there's only one painter allowed during planning phase. That's it for that uh, constraint. And finally, there are two days where they cannot work at all. They've been kicked out. So project, tent working time, and we go to that to those two dates here, and we give a name to that. Uh, Time where they cannot work, you should have the dates popping up, and then you press OK. So that's it. We have um, our project, so we double check everything is OK. I'll do a bit of tidying up, maybe there, putting this. And then we can, maybe we can put some additional resources there. The owners for the sign off and cleanup team, yeah, if you like for this or painters. And then a few days later, or let's say when the project starts, just a matter of going back on the tasks, uh, there's a quick way to update for some you know, specific percentage day, 0, 25, 50. So let's say the first task is completed, you just click on 100%. Uh, but otherwise, there's also field percentage complete that you can use if you want to be more precise. I like to have a different color for because I love uh, working with scholars, I like to have a different color for different types of resources. So this is it. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, if you subscribe, I have plenty more of those coming your way.